Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be another book cover design video, except today we're going to be talking more about how to make your own book cover, particularly for beginners who want to stick to free software and also minimal equipment. Today I will be using a free software, which is GIMP. I will be using paper, I will be using ink and a paintbrush and maybe a pencil and my phone camera to make this book cover. So the first step of making a book cover is to get an idea. I used to draw thumbnails a lot when I was younger and just getting into book cover design. And I know a lot of professional designers will do thumbnails because it's a great way to test out your design without wasting a whole bunch of time fiddling with like the final product. So a thumbnail is like a small shrunken down sketch idea of what the final design is going to look like. I'm actually not going to do a thumbnail because I already have a concept. It kind of just came in my head, but it's a great idea if you'd like to brainstorm. I've already picked out an image. Usually when I'm designing book covers, for example, for the redesigning my book cover series, I will find pictures as I go. But I actually found a picture of a woman floating. She's like swimming in a swimming pool a few days ago, and I thought it would be absolutely perfect. I'm going to link a blog post where I outline a whole bunch of places you can get stock images if you are interested. These are all 100% free stock images. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new canvas. So I'm going to press Control N to pop up the new canvas generator thingy and I'm going to do inches and I think what I will do is 5.25 inches by 8. You can do whatever size you want. Sometimes I do 5.5 by 8.5. It doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that you drop down advanced options and you make sure that the resolution's at 300 um, by 300 pixels. Like I said, I already have the image, so I'm just going to find it in File Explorer and then just drag and drop it into GIMP. Because this is for digital, I'm not going to change the color profile to CMYK. I believe it is in RGB. Yeah, it says right in the Top right here, it's in RGB. So that's good for digital, red, green, blue. CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So that will be for print. So that's a little hack. If you're doing something in print, you're gonna wanna do it in CMYK. Unified transform tool. If you hold down control while you use this unified transform tool, the image will stay the same proportions. You can just shrink it, which is pretty nice. So I'm gonna just shrink it so it's like the same width. Then I'm going to change to the move tool and the unified transform tool has been applied. As you can see, now I'm using the move tool. I'm going to move this image all the way up and I'm going to cut off her face. I don't really want her face on the book cover. I'm on the layer woman swimmer. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate that layer. And now I'm going to use that move tool, which is like that little arrow thingy. And I'm going to move it down and then I'm going to go to layer, transform, and then rotate until her face faces like the bottom of the page. So I just rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. I guess I could have rotated it 180 degrees. I'm going to like cut off her face about the exact same amount. So this is kind of what I'm going for for this book cover. I want her to be mirrored. I thought it might look like kind of bizarre if there were two of her the short story collection title is called She Is Also Dead. And so I'm not saying that this woman is dead. She's clearly alive in the photo. So now that I have everything, I'm going to click on the background here so that I don't see this like highlighted yellow thing. So I can see what the image looks like. But you could probably already tell there's a problem here. And the problem is that there's this big white space in the middle. And clearly like I want it to be small. I don't want to have to blow up this image any bigger. So if I go back to this transform tool here, I mean, I could make it bigger and like press enter there and then see it would be fine, but it just looks weird, right? That's not what I'm going for. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the swimmer again. So right click on the layer and then click duplicate layer. And I'm going to use, is the move tool? I think the move tool shortcut is M. Yes, it is. And I'm going to just move her so that she's in the middle. But now that there's this girl in the middle, I obviously, I don't want a third one right here in the middle, so I need to get rid of her. I know GIMP does have the equivalent to Photoshop's Content Aware Fill. It's like a plugin. I don't have it downloaded. I just downloaded GIMP again to my computer today. So I didn't download the plugin and I figured if you're new to cover design, you probably wouldn't download a plugin. So I'm gonna show you a hack on how you can fill in this space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on the third duplication 
um, so the one we just made, and duplicate it again. So right now we have four of these ladies. As you can see, if I move it, it's fine. I'm just gonna control Z, which will undo, so I could just put it back where it was. Um, and I'm gonna find a like path tool. Here we go, the path tool. I'm going to just outline her. If I press shift plus, I can zoom up. So see, I remember some things. If I press the space bar button, the move tool will show up. So it's like Photoshop, so I can move it. So I can easily select around her. If you want an intro to all of these tools, I did do a video explaining like how they work and where you can find them. There are tons of YouTube tutorials. This is more showing you a workflow of um, my decisions and so on. I'm going to outline around her until I get to the very end. And I'm making sure to stay pretty close to her body, but you don't have to be perfect about it. I kind of showed you how to do this in my original GIMP tutorial, and this is one of my the easier ways, I think, to remove something. So I'm gonna zoom up a little bit more so you can see, press the space bar, it will bring up the move tool. I'm gonna try to close this path, and then I'm gonna press selection from path. So you can see, that it selected everything. When I have her selected, I can just press delete and that will delete her, <laughs> as you can see. I'm just gonna press select and then do none so that it stops selecting her and then I'll like get off to the move tool. And so I have this lady underneath, remember the third one that we created? I just turned it off briefly um, and see I'm turning the layer back on. So she's showing back up, but this is the, the layer that we deleted her from. She's not gone from this one, but what now I can do is I can use the move tool to move her so she is out of the way. And hopefully I can sort of blend her. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna transform this layer a little bit, use that transform tool that I used a second ago just to make it a little bit bigger so that she can blend away <laughs> a little bit more easily. So we have her here. Just kind of moving it until it looks okay. And I'm gonna take the eraser tool and just erase whatever I don't want to be covered. So you can see the top ladies being kind of covered and I'm just going to erase that a little bit. And the eraser tool that I have right now is actually pretty soft. So I'm going to make it even softer. I'm going to choose this super soft one so that the edges look pretty nice and blended. So this is the layer we're working on. You can see I kind of am erasing at it. I'm going to duplicate it again and cover up the rest of this surface by sort of decoupaging my way through it instead of using something like content aware fill or like a transform tool. All right, so you can see that her little face is sticking out. I don't want her face there. So I'm gonna go back to the erase tool and I'm gonna delete her hand and I'm gonna delete her face. And you can see there's just one little hole left where her body is. So I'm going to duplicate it once more and see if I can move the layer so that it covers it up. So I'm gonna move it like right there and you can see her, like the side of her body sticking out. So I'm just gonna erase that. And when I deselect it, like it looks pretty decent. Like it doesn't look too bad. Um, you can kind of see there's a line of demarcation right here at the top. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. that that's coming from this topmost layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take the eraser brush and I'm gonna very lightly erase the very top so that line isn't as harsh. And because we're using a soft brush, it's gonna look pretty well blended. And when there's text over top, you're probably gonna not notice it as much. Obviously the right hand side, you can see it looks like it has been duplicated a few times, but again, with the text on top, you're probably not gonna notice as much. So this is a pretty quick fix if you don't have something like Content Aware Fill and you do need to expand the picture and you don't wanna download the plugin that's like the equivalent to GIMP. It does take a little bit of finagling. If you wanna see a more in-depth 
walkthrough, I do have a video where I do this exact thing to cover up a section of the image. And I will make sure to link that tutorial, like I said. Now that we have the image, we're going to move on to the text. So you can use a font here, but when I first started graphic design, I actually found I learned a lot more when I did hand lettering. I'm using a pencil and paper to draw something out or paint it out and then you will scan it or use a picture to capture it and then import it into the software so that you can make it like an overlay, for example, which I will get to if you don't know what any of that stuff means. So when you do hand lettering, you get to be pretty intimate with the process because you are literally the one who's drawing it by hand. I did a lot of book covers where it was purely me using a Sharpie marker and taking pictures on my phone uh, and then importing them into GIMP. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So I have a few methods, but I'm going to just stick to ink today. If you don't have ink, this is like a Speedball India ink. If you don't have ink, that's okay. You can use acrylic paint watered down. You can use watercolor or you could just use a marker. If it's like blue, for example, you can desaturate it later on and make it like more of a dark black color if you don't want it to be like blue ink, for example. But for the sake of this video, let's just all pretend that we all have black India ink. And if we don't black acrylic paint or like a black watercolor. So this is the ink that I'm going to use. And I have a bundle paint brushes that I can use today. I got these from Amazon. I got them for an oil painting and they're pretty bent because I wasn't storing them properly, but they're going to work fine. And I have a little bit of water. And of course, like I just showed you, I have the paper. So what does the pencil have to do with anything? Well, I want to mold the text around the body, but I can't do that without like looking at where her body is. So for example, if I wrote the title, she is also dead, but I wrote it like in a rectangle, when I try to go fit it into the actual image of the book cover, it might not flow so well. So how I get around that is either you can print off the image that you just created here. So I would print off like a small copy of this lady floating. And then I would write on top of that and then trace over it and scan that trace. Or what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just roughly sketch out the shapes that we have going on and I'll show you exactly how I do that. All right, so welcome to my desk. You can see you are looking at this piece of paper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly sketch out a 5.25 by 8 section on this piece of paper. I'm going to go grab a ruler so I can get the exact measurement, but you could definitely just do an estimated measurement. So I have a ruler here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark in the middle of the page 5 point. I'm very bad at inches. I don't actually know how this works. I think this is 0.25. I don't know. Uh, just roughly. And this is going to recreate the canvas that we've made in GIMP, but onto a piece of paper. So I'm just going to finish off drawing the rectangle. All right, as you can see, it's pretty rough. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at the image on my computer and roughly sketch out where I see this woman's body. It'll just be pretty rough. Guidelines, again, are just supposed to show us the shape so that we have a better idea of the flow, the space we have to work with. So as you can see, pretty crude. <laughs> it doesn't have to be fancy at all. And I'm gonna do the same for the bottom. So now I have a top and the bottom of the image and they're both mirrored. So what I'm gonna do now is I have a paintbrush and I have my ink and now I have enough space and an idea of how I can write out the letters. So first I'm going to just do a rough sketch with some pencil and then I'm going to ink it. But you could do multiple of these quote unquote like kind of big thumbnail sketches just so that you can test out the lettering between them instead of only having one to practice on and like do the final product on. For the sake of this video I probably will just do the one but I could definitely keep redrawing this until I have like a canvas and I have the lettering that I really 
really prefer after I practice and practice and practice. I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to just use some pencil and kind of test it out. So something that I actually did a few days ago, and I'm just going to go to the bottom of the page so that I can test it out first, is I actually used my left hand when I was doing the lettering for a book cover that uh, you haven't seen yet. So I'm going to write out she is also dead in my left hand. And if you're new to lettering, doing something in your left hand or your non-dominant hand can be really helpful in creating a new style of look. So my handwriting looks like this. I'm a lot more comfortable with it. You can see the font is darker here too, but here you get a little bit more variation in the letter. See with the, the, the letter she, it looks kind of like more blocky, right? Uh, which is very different to how I've written the S in my dominant hand, which is this like curve, right? And so using your non-dominant hand can be super helpful in getting a more unique look so that the book cover doesn't look like your handwriting is on it. Not that that's a bad thing. People probably don't know what your handwriting looks like, so they probably will like the lettering. Is that just me? When I see somebody else's handwriting on a book cover, I'm like, I love it. If it's mine, I don't want it on there. But I'm gonna just test out sketching this and I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, so you can see these are the letters that I did. On the right hand side, you can see there are a whole bunch of extra letters. And this is a trick that I picked up after a few times doing hand lettered book covers and messing up the letters and then having to go back and redo them. I put some extra like alternate versions on the side if I messed up. So for example, like um, if we look at this E right here, uh, you saw I dropped some ink on it at the last second. And so I painted painted another one and if I didn't like that one I painted another one. I also did the same thing with the H here as you can see I kind of messed it up it looks a bit too messy so I have a few alternates down here just in case. Same with the M in my name I wasn't sure if I was gonna like that so I put a few on the side and that really just saves you some time instead of having to do it all over multiple times. And you can see it's not perfect like I kind of went out of the lines but this just gives us a better idea at composition. We're starting with the composition on the page rather than trying to compose it afterward. We're already setting ourselves up for success. So this is just purely with India ink. Like I said, you could use diluted acrylic paint or even like tempera paint. You could use whatever really pigment that could go on a paper, like food coloring would work too. So I'm going to take a picture of this with my phone in clear light, making sure there aren't any shadows. Honestly, the screenshot of this would work perfectly fine. So the letters seem to be in a pretty, you know, evenly lit space. If I just move it a bit more, yeah, that should be fine. I'm just kind of in the way, so I'm gonna just try to move away. And this is just an iPhone 8, so it's not like the fanciest. I'm gonna just focus on the page and I'm gonna take a picture. And I'm just gonna repeat that until I get one that like works. But as long as the picture is relatively clear, um, you could do this with any phone. You could even use a scanner. I have a scanner. I just couldn't be bothered to go scan this right now. So the closer you get, you know, the more detail you'll get in the letter. So trying to stay pretty well within the frame and you could get something that looks like that. And I'm just going to email that to myself and then I have all the letters digitally. All right, everybody. So we are back in GIMP. And as you can see, I've just opened the photo. I took another picture just with more even lighting. So there weren't any shadows on the actual picture itself. And it is a little bit wonky, but that's totally fun. So I didn't actually go in and get rid of any of the pencil lines, which I guess I probably should have done. If it becomes a problem, I will 
retake the picture, but I have a feeling that it should be fine. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop this image as best as I can, uh, just to get as much of the white rather than like the gray bedspread. So I mean, that looks pretty fine. The bottom is just a little bit imperfect. So I'm gonna just try that again, but maybe try to get less of the bottom. That looks pretty good. The top is there now, but that should be fine. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to color and click on brightness contrast. And I'm just gonna increase the brightness and the contrast until the background looks like white and the foreground looks black. So I'm gonna press okay. Um, so because I took this in like regular lighting, the black is not really pure black. It has like a brown tint to it. So I'm gonna go to color and then I'm gonna go hue saturation and I'm just going to do zero on the saturation. So here I am on the saturation. I'm just gonna bring the whole bar to negative 100 and that's gonna make the black like gray where it's like lighter for example rather than brown that's just a little hack that I, I like to do and then we're gonna scroll all the way down until we find this little thing that says color to alpha so we're gonna make sure that the color is white and as you can see the preview already removed the background and what this filter is basically gonna do is it's gonna strip the background of the white or if I wanted to strip the black I would just select the black. I'm actually just trying to remove the background, so I'm gonna go to the white and I'm gonna press OK. So now we have this great overlay and we can do a lot with this. But first I'm gonna just do the eraser tool. I'm just gonna erase some stuff that I don't want so I don't have to bring this over into the next document. I'm just gonna erase it kind of roughly, don't really care, it doesn't have to be too fancy. As you can see, I'm just gonna go in and erase like the pencil lettering that I didn't want from earlier. You can see some of the pencil lines are still there, but I'm not too concerned about that. Now that it's actually black, I'm going to want to make it white. So we're going to go back into color and we're going to go to invert and invert is going to make it white. And the reason why I'm making the letters white is because the book cover, which is over here, is like a kind of a darker blue. So I think it will add more contrast if the letters are white. So now that this is basically done, I'm going to just copy. So press control C, go into the document with the book cover and press control V. And so that's going to paste everything. And as you can see, it's, it's pasted everything, even the stuff that I didn't want it to paste, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to go over here and right click and then make sure it says to new layer. So it's not like a floating selection. Um, I didn't know how to do that for the longest time in GIMP. It was so annoying. And just like before, I'm going to take the erase tool and just erase the notebook that it, it brought with it. I don't want the notebook here. You can see the letters are pretty small. So one thing I'm concerned about is that it won't be a high enough resolution. So that could be because it's my particular phone or I sent it through my email. So it's not super high res anymore, but I'm not too concerned about it for this particular project. But if you really want it to be high res, take it with like a DSLR or scan it in or make sure that your text fills up the full page and that you like put it on Google Drive or something so that it doesn't lose resolution by sending it through your email. But I'm just going to make it pretty big so that it fills the space. It already looks like pretty legit, even though like it's it's a huge mess already. So um, I'm just going to move it. See? It looks basically perfect, right? I really, I like this. I'm actually gonna make it um, a little bit smaller just so that I can see the alternate letters a bit better. So again, using that free transform tool and I keep accidentally doing that. I don't want it to do that. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit for now. I'm gonna just make sure that I also, here in the move tool, it was originally on pick a layer or guide. I'm gonna just click it to move the active layer so that it doesn't start selecting like the random women in the background. So we have the letters here. I wanna make it just a teensy bit smaller just so that I can see some of the alternate letters a bit easier. So as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Um, the only problem, is that there's kind of like some pencil lines. So, so as I see fit, I'm gonna take the eraser tool 
and I'm gonna make sure it's like the proper size and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna go ahead and erase these lines um, I don't really think it's gonna be necessary to do anything beyond using something as simple as the erase tool like I said I, I could have probably erased this before using an eraser because it was ink it probably would have been fine but for the sake of this video I don't really care the most important one that I want to really erase is this like a guideline I'm not really concerned um, about you know the other ones so it actually kind of looks cool um, with these like letters I'm probably gonna keep those actually so if I was doing this for a professional book cover you can see if I zoom up the letters are quite pixelated I would make sure to take this with like a high-res camera because this is just kind of for funsies I'm not gonna bother to get a higher res version of the letters but you could totally go ahead and do that so I actually really, I like it. I don't even think I'm going to need the <laughs> the alternates. You know, I see, you see I have a whole bunch on the side, but uh, some of the mistakes, I actually think they look quite nice. Because originally I didn't really like the, the S and the also. I didn't like that I messed up the H, so I was going to use some of these alternates. Yeah, so today I actually don't think that I would even remove it. And so now that we have the letters, I am going to grab that eraser tool again. Again, here we go. And just erase everything that I don't want. So kind of all the extra letters, and then I will have to do some touch-ups and get closer. But for now, we're just gonna remove some of these letters since I don't want them anymore. Sometimes hand lettering will surprise you and you get it right on the first try. <laughs> so another way to scale your layer is to go to layer. I used to do this more often actually when I used GIMP rather than use like any of their transform tools. And then just kind of like enter a number and then press scale. That looks actually pretty nice. If we fit it in there, you can see it's fitting into her body, but the bottom here looks a little bit wonky. So what I'm gonna do, because it looks like it's fitting quite nicely under her, but it's not really fitting quite nicely everywhere else. You can see also dead, and then my name is kind of off to the, the left. It looks a little bit bizarre. So I'm going to take the selection tool. You could use the path tool. So this is the draw selection tool. I'm just gonna use my keypad to like, as best as I can, select around this. Ooh and then make sure I connect it, and then you know the selection's active when it looks like there are like ants kind of walking around. I'm gonna press Control C, which is gonna copy the selection, and then I'm gonna press the Delete key, and then I'm gonna press Control V, which is gonna paste everything that I just selected onto a new layer. As you can see, it says floated um, selection, pasted layer. So I'm going to right click and then press to new layer, and there you go. Now, now you can move it and have fun. So I'm going to use the transform tool, which we used before, which is so weird. I'm not used to this, but it works the same as the, the other, like the Photoshop one. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and then I'm going to use the move tool again. Now I can more easily, you know, move the title around. So the only problem now that I'm running into is like my name isn't looking too hot. So first I'm going to do a few things to fix that. I'm going to take the eraser tool and I'm going to erase this random ugly line. <laughs> and I kind of like the sketches like underneath, but at the same time, maybe I don't. So I'm just going to kind of like delete the ones that are like kind of catching my attention a little too much. And then I don't really care about the rest. So just kind of, you know, Erase as we go, see what decisions make the most sense, which ones I don't have to make, you know? But yeah, you can see I'm just kind of choosing, picking and choosing as I go. I'm not perfect with this. Like I said, I probably should have erased this before I took a picture of it, but I I did not. So I kind of like the, the other ones, so I'm going to leave them like that. But now I'm going to rename this layer to She Is. I'm going to make sure the Move Tools on Move the Active Layer. I just kind of moved it slightly, and now I can see there's like an S here that's a little bit distracting. I'm going to delete that one with the, the Eraser tool. So that looks quite nice, I would say. Um, only thing I'm going to do now is move this A a little bit, and also so that there's a bit kind of a better composition because right now 
there's like an ugly gap between the H and the A. So I'm going to go to the pasted layer, which is the also, see? And I'm going to grab the selection tool again. I'm going to draw around the A. The path tool would probably be easier to do this if you didn't have like a drawing tablet, which I'm not. I'm just using my mouse, but it works. Then it's selected. I'm going to press co uh, copy and then delete, paste, and then make sure that I bring this to a new layer. I'm going to rename this uh, A so that I know what I'm looking at. Then I can move it basically wherever I want. I just wanted to move it up a little bit so that it looked a bit better. Let's zoom out. That looks really nice, I think. The only thing, I'm noticing more things as I, as I do. The is here, I think I want to move up because it's kind of touching the S in the also. So I'm going to select that, uh, copy it, and then delete it. Make sure it's on its own new layer. And then I'm going to uh, change the name to is so that I know what I'm looking at. And then we'll just move it up a little bit. So it's just like minor little adjustments like this, which really, I think, help with consistency. I'm thinking I also want the S over here in the she to be bigger so that it takes up more space so you can see there's a gap between oh, there's a gap between the s and the a kind of want to shrink that so let me select select that i'm gonna oh i didn't select that properly <laughs> make sure i don't cut off the letter there we go copy the s delete it paste it uh, and then we're going to bring it to its new layer and then rename it S. And then I can use the free transform thingy. <laughs> and I can, I can make it bigger. This kind of confuses me, this tool, honestly. There we go. So if you press Alt, I see. If you press Alt, then you can make it bigger. Um, now I just want to move stories and then I'll move my name. The pasted layer is the one that we're looking for. I'll just put this as also dead. So now I'm going to grab the selection tool again. I keep messing up and like selecting things by mistake. This is totally exactly how my book cover process goes every single time. Me just messing up and not knowing what I'm doing, even though I've been literally making book covers for so long. So <laughs> I'm just going to kind of precariously select out my name. Make sure it's selected, copy my name, delete it, paste it, uh, put it to a new layer, and then rename the layer as Rachel Lachman Singh. There we go. And now I can use the move tool to move it down. I still haven't figured out a way like to move selections like without having to copy and paste it onto a new layer. I'm not sure if GIMP can do that or if I just don't know how to do that. It could very much be that. So I'm also going to find that pasted layer again, which is also dead. I'm gonna move stories. I thought I was gonna put it in her hand, but like near her hand at the bottom left corner, but I'm gonna put it in this gap, which is kind of just nicely waiting there. There we go, we have it selected. I'm gonna copy it, delete it, paste it, and then I'm gonna put it on its new layer. I'm gonna change the layer name to stories so then I can move it. Now I'm just gonna kind of shift it around i think grab this transform tool and i know there was a rotate tool at one point oh the uniform five transform tool i guess they got rid of the rotate tool which is why i'm very confused right now because nothing that i'm used to is here there we go so i rotated it and i rotated it just so it would fit nice in this space i'm gonna move my name down a little more you know what i think that looks quite legit. Do you know what I think it's missing though? I want my name to be a different color. I'm gonna click on this lock alpha channel thingy right here and I'm going to grab a brush. Here we go. And I'm just gonna find the paintbrush. I'm gonna make it big, window, dockable dialogues, colors. I'm gonna change the color to like a highlighter yellow, I think, and paint it over my name. I think that looks much better actually. Just so that it separates the title and like stories a little bit more. It looks a little snazzier. And now I'm actually going to just delete more of these like sketch lines, which I definitely should have deleted perfectly before uh, before I did this. It's mostly this line right here that I want to get rid of. You could use um, a layer mask for this. I don't know how to do that in GIMP. 
I know you can, I just don't know how. So I'm just going to do it the way I do know how, and that is with the eraser tool, which is a permanent decision, but that's okay. We live life on the edge when we make book covers, right? So I'm just erasing these pencil lines that are distracting. The other ones I'm not too concerned about. That's the cover. You could also go ahead and do some color correction, but I, I really like the colors that are in this cover. When you export it, you won't see this yellow selection line around it, by the way. That's just a thing that GIMP does. But yeah, so that is uh, walking you through making a book cover like from start to finish and doing it in real time and stuff. So I hope that this was helpful for you in some way. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another one. Bye.